works. Looks does. Yeah. Okay, good evening at uh, the meeting uh, the meeting of the committee on fiscal structure. We'll start at 7 p.m. Will the clerk please take the roll? Uh, Alderman Lopez. I'm here. Alderman Schmidt is here. Alderman Jetty. Here. Alderman Gitch. Here. And Chair Michael O'Brien. Present. Okay, we're all in attendance. Uh, I think uh, Alderman Jan Smith for stepping into the temporary position as acting clerk. Uh, we're going to open up the meeting for public comment. We do have uh, one speaker, Mr. Frank Philbrick. Could you come to the microphone, please? Yes, go ahead, Mr. Uh, good Philbrick. Evening. Uh, good evening, folks, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, we're here again to, uh, to request a, a number. We own a lot on 25 New Searles Road. It's adjacent, actually, to number 25. And at the onset of this, we bought the property, we fixed up the house, and we were uh, made aware and had worked with the uh, Building Committee and Zoning Committee that that lot was a legally buildable lot. At some point in its history, the number that was originally assigned to it was number 27, got moved over. So we started the, the request to get it numbered so we could build a, build a, a residence there befitting the community, cleaning up that lot. It's, it's got a, uh, you know, a bunch of overgrowth, and it looks, it looks like heck. So we were trying to, uh, again, he head down the path of getting, uh, getting, getting it in a position where we could uh, put a piece of a house on it. As a result of, I guess, the E91 structure that the state is, or the city is looking at doing, they at the, the fire marshal and the uh, street numbering folks had told us that we could not have 25 or a variant of 25. So we ended up having to go through the channels to get to where we are here today with you folks to get a number assigned. Our initial request was for 25A or 25 and a half or 2501 or again, any variant thereof. We didn't want to bring any, any you know, undue hardships on uh, the folks that now use 27 who were originally 29. Uh, but through this process, unfortunately, the, the, you know, they, uh, the Mrs. Allard uh, created a lot of angst and uh, that partially was addressed in the last meeting that you folks had. And when we started to see that uh, the, the majority of the, the uh, attendance and participants at that time were kind of leaning towards the 25A that fell right into our, what our original request is. So after we left the meeting here, we met with the Allards, uh, the son of Mrs. Allard. Uh, he came over because we went from here to the property. He came over, we chatted for a spell, and uh, it says, we'll just bring it up. It says, please, just give us 25A and uh, be done with it. Any questions of me? So just for the transcriber, can you make sure you say your name and your address, please? Certainly. Name is Frank Philbrick, 74 Mason Road, Milford, New Hampshire, is my current residence. Very good. Could I ask a question? Uh, usually during public comment, uh, it, we had a hearing on it, but where you weren't present, I will indulge you with a question. But uh, just generally so you know that the format, uh, there was a hearing on this previously. So, yes, Alderman Jetty, please ask a question. So if I understand you correctly, you don't, you don't care what the number is as long as you get a number and, and you can proceed. So the, the 25A is fine with you? It's preferred with me, yes. Okay. Thank you. Or us, I should say. This is my team. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Philbrook, if there's no other questions. All right. Since we've gone through the public, we'll close the public comment part. Now comes to the election of the committee clerk. Do I have a motion to uh, nominate uh, Alderman Lopez? Um, do we need to make a motion to open nominations, or can we just directly nominate? Uh, you, you can make a motion to nominate a particular candidate. Okay. Then I would like to nominate um, Jan Schmidt as clerk. Okay. We have a motion to nominate Jan Schmidt as cl committee clerk for the 2018 to 2019 term. Um, is there any other further nominations? Seeing none, like Alderman to, uh, Gidge. I would like to close. Alderman Gidge makes a motion to close nominations. 
Seeing nominations are closed, I'll now call for a vote. Um, may I just point out that my original question was whether we should open it, so we didn't actually have a motion to formally open nomination. So I'm not sure where we are in the process, but if we open the nomination, then we would vote on it and agree that that's what we're doing. Then we would accept nominations and then close nominations and vote on that and then vote on the nominees is my understanding. We can if you want. Okay. I know it seems arduous, but I don't want anybody to point at this and be like, we didn't do it right. <laughs> I so think we're I just make an okay, original, original right. motion There's to open nomination. There's a motion nominations. from Alderman Lopez to uh, nominate Alderman Smith, seeing that, but the, it was, we, my decorum in looking at it was we could have another candidate to come in mm -hmm. and put their name in. And then I would ask if there were any further candidates. Seeing that there's no other further candidates, I asked Alderman Gidge to, um, he made a nomination to close. So therefore, now we're at the point where we will vote on the one particular candidate. Okay. If everybody understands that to be the situation, then I guess it's just group okay. decision. All right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Seeing that we have a vote for Alderman Schmidt for a committee clerk. All those in favor say aye. 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 And congratulations to <clears throat> our new clerk. Thank you clerk very much. Okay. okay. Um, again, we're into the part of public comment. I think, Mr. Philbrick, you have said your piece, so... That is good. Okay. Communications. There are none. Okay. Petitions. You can read. We have a motion by Alderman O'Brien to recommend that the Board of Aldermen grant the street renumbering petition in part with a stipulation that street that sheet B, lot 1058, be assigned the street address of 25A New Searles Road and that there be no address change to sheet B, lot 59. Okay. I would have read first, but that's quite all right because we're all getting our feet wet here together. <laughs> but the petition standing before us is street renumbering petition 25 New Searles Road and 27 New Searles Road. This was postponed to the first meeting in January 2018. Now, I hope in front of you that most of you have like a little bit of a packet or a piece of paper here. And what it is is some of the material that was brought up uh, in the December meeting uh, that was brought up to basically the board. What seems to be at issue here is the person at, and I, I did bring up the area in question, New Searles Road on the map. The person that does live at number 27 wishes to keep their number 27. Mr. Philbrick, who has testified before the committee before, is involved with the purchase of both lots and uh, wants to turn the vacant lot into a, put a structure on the uh, other building. What seems to be at issue here is the state emergency E911 system, which they like to have the numbers put out. And it could be done in other places across the state fairly easily when you have two acres in between houses and everything else. But here in Nashua, our congestion leads us into a different type of format. There are other places in the city of Nashua that come under similar circumstances where there's a number of A or 25 in and a half. And I've had experiences with this in my previous employment being on the fire department. What as issue here is we have two good people before the board. One, the petitioner, who wants to build on this lot. He has the right to do so, and the Alderman Infrastructure Committee recognizes that. However, it does will come to a cost to the, uh, Mrs. Allard, who lives at number 27, to change the address and all the other work that needs to go along to do with that. And looking at trying to uh, come up with a compromise that all parties could come to some agreement with, thus I come up with my motion to recommend that the alderman will grant street renumbered petition in part, 
with the stipulation that she be lot 1058, and that's, uh, hmm, how did that get bigger on me here? But, uh, yeah, that's this lot that's in between number 25 and, uh, there we go, 25 and 27, uh, be assigned the address of 25A. And uh, that seems to be amicable to both Mrs. Allard and it seems to be amicable to um, Mr. Philbrook. Now, who has the final decisions? The Board of Aldermen has the final decision on this. So I'm going to ask for the vote on my motion uh, and uh, we'll push it forward to the full Board of Aldermen at that point. I will open it up for discussion on the motion. And, and may I also bring up, too, the motion that's sitting before you replaces the petition. Okay. So I'll open up to discussion. And Alderman Lopez, did you have your hand up? Yeah, I just wanted to remark for the record that the communication that we have before us is not a new communication. It was received in a previous um, Committee on Infrastructure meeting on December 13th. Uh, 2017. Um, I was on the committee at that time, and uh, Ms. Allard particularly was um, concerned about the personal expense that might be accrued and having to change all of her paperwork, her deed, all that kind of stuff, the address on it. There would be a financial cost if we insisted that this be 25, 27, 29. Um, she's also lived at her location for years um, and asked us, you know, in good faith, could we consider a different option? So if you know, she wants to keep her number, and it's been her number for all of these years, and the Mr. Philbrick is open to um, just accepting 25A. I, I feel like we can honor both of those requests. Very good. Any other discussion on the motion, Alderman Gidge? Uh, your previous uh, profession being a fireman, is that acceptable to yourself and 911? <clears throat> uh, I think 911 and possibly the fire marshal may have uh, some disagreement because they like to have everything right schematically right sure. down. But the trouble is we're a city that existed prior to 911 system and telephones, and it is in this type of situation. Uh, the neighborhood that we're talking about is, I think, was built in approximately in the late 60s, around 1969. And again, that predates the 911 era. And so everything prior to that or prior to the 911 system, this is why we have, uh, I say, you know, up in the French Hill neighborhood, there's also some down on uh, Chestnut Street and different other areas and part of the city. And if this becomes like a futuristic issue, the Infrastructure Committee of the Future can sit down and look at all these properties and maybe make the one particular change at one time. So this is why I'm kind of comfortable with this. And I would say uh, fi our firemen is a good fire department. I, I think you may have heard they did a wonderful job last night. There was a fire last night, and I have uh, high expectations that they should be able to conquer a, 25, a street address of 25A. They should be commended, by the way. It's yes. not good weather out there. and. Uh... Uh, that that would be my concern. And uh, the uh, is there enough separation? There will be no confusion, or is it close enough where there would be no confusion at all? I don't anticipate. Is if you look at the map, and let me try to make it a little bit. Uh, this is kind of a touchy little mouse here uh, wheel. But if you look at 25, if there's male confusion, and that's where I think probably would be the greatest type of thing. Uh, the mailman delivers on a daily basis, so I think he could figure it out within the first yeah. week, you know. Uh, but if you look at so close together, there's no gappages by another street or any natural boundaries or anything. So from it would read 25, 25A, and 27 as we go down from the top of the screen there. So I, I don't anticipate any, any type of problem. Any other? Alderman Jetty. So uh, when I uh, reviewed the, uh, the petition and the, uh, the documents that were attached to it uh, that were submitted to the previous uh, Board of Aldermen and the, were, were viewed by this committee back in December, uh, I saw that there was a memo from the uh, City of Nashua Addressing Committee uh, 
and the uh, the memo is uh, from the fire marshal, uh, Captain E. Z. Paulson. I assume he's a fire captain. Um, no, uh, actually, I think he's from the uh, police department. Okay. And uh, P. Andruskevich from the GIS Tech. Um, that's the mapping software, I believe. Um, Sarah Marchant, the CD uh, Community Development Director. Uh, M. Wilkins, the City Planner. And Celia Leonard uh, from the City Attorney's Office. And they all explained um, the history of this, of these uh, three lots, um, 25, uh, the, the vacant lot, and what is now lot 27. And uh, they explain that when, when this subdivision was originally approved back in 1970 or so, um, the, uh, the lots uh, that are numbered 25, there was a vacant lot, and the lot that is now uh, 27 was, was then assigned 29 New Searles Road, and then the following one is 31. So back then, it was, it was logical. 25, the vacant lot, reserved for 27, uh, 29, and 31. And that's, the memo says that, um, that the owner of lot, what is now, now has the address of, of 27 New Searles Road, uh, started for some unknown reason using the number 29. So it was uh, the present owner's pre, uh, you know, someone in the previous uh, title of the uh, present owner, for some unknown reason, started using the wrong number. And that, that left us with the, uh, the problem that we have now. Um, this addressing committee uh, said that uh, to, um, to be E911 compliant, um, and I don't know why, uh, but uh, they don't allow um, addresses of uh, A's and halves and whatever. And so to be 911 compliant, they recommend that uh, we go back to the original addresses of uh, the vacant lot would be 27, and what is now 27 would go back to its original designation of 29. Um, now, I understand the, 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 uh, the desire to try to reach a compromise that is acceptable to, uh, to everyone, um, but has, has this addressing committee been involved in this? Have they been consulted about this amendment that you're proposing? Well, <clears throat> I take great comfort in the second paragraph, if you look at the sheet that you are referring to, and where it begins in accordance on the second paragraph with RSA 21-133A and NRO 190-213, the Board of Aldermen have the sole authority to assign or alter address numbers of buildings and other property along any public or private way in the, in the municipality. Now, continuing on, the New Hampshire Addressing Standard Guide developed by New Hampshire E911 defines universal safety standards for addressing in New Hampshire. So I am going by the state RSA and our own ordinances, and I guess what my motion is is to go against the guide, which is a guide in my interpretation. Alderman Lopez. Uh, was there a follow-up? Yes. Yes, please. Excuse me, Alderman Lopez. So is your answer no, that they have not been, they have not been consulted about this change and they, they have not agreed to this change? Some of the people who you see uh, on the top of the header uh, have been advised and are in support of this. 
including uh, whenever, and I don't, when you write a motion and ordinance, you get it clarified through legal, too. So this was under contact with our legal department as well. So uh, I'm still left with a, con a concern that um, as we're trying to become 911 compliant. Um, right, and not to, Alderman, not to keep rehashing it, but there are other places in the city, many places in the city, that this just fits into the pot, so to speak, for lack of a better term. And will those need to be addressed in the future? The answer is yes. Uh, we're not reinventing the wheel on this one. There are other places within our municipality of the city of Nashua that do have this type of number and structure. So this just goes into the mix. And like I say, I took it upon taking into account on uh, something that seems to be amicable to both the petitioner and to the longstanding resident of number 27. And this makes us somewhat a little bit harmless to all parties involved and everybody seems amicable, amicable to it. So why I thus came up with that, uh, you know, motion. Alderman Lopez. Uh, I just wanted to reiterate that the letter we're talking about from the previous meeting is the same one that we have on our desk. Um, and that the reasoning at the time on the infrastructure committee was that this could potentially create an inconvenience for the woman who's living there because there's a tangible cost to her changing all the documents um, involved. In contrast, what the addressing committee was describing is the city of Nashville is not E911 compliant yet. We are in the data collection stage of possibly being asked to consider becoming that. And even in that circumstance, we still have the authority to number our streets and our houses the way that we want. So further down in the paragraph, it does clarify that this is something that's ahead of the road, it's down the road, it's on the radar, and they're aware of it, and that's what their determination was. But everybody on the addressing committee also has access to these public records, works for the city in some role or the other, and they're fully aware of the discussion that we had at the infrastructure committee, too. They're also aware of the request for 25A, because I believe, as Mr. Filbert pointed out, that was his, initial, his original request. The decision or recommendation, I guess, to change it to 27, which represents that inconvenience to the person currently living there, came from the addressing committee. So we have the authority to do this. It's not going to tip on any current situation. It's just a potential future situation down the road that may happen. And we would be inconveniencing someone who's lived at that house for, I believe, 27 years, whereas they've reached an agreement, the, the builder and the neighbor are in, in co like collaboration with this and in accord. So I don't see why we would need to create friction between people just to make sure that we have whole numbers and round um, results. I think the fire department can find it if there's an emergency. Yes, well, uh, I, think, uh, I think since we do have the authority, and it is going to be easier. And, and you know, I certainly understand uh, where the, the other alderman is coming from. But you know, we're a friendly city, and if this is the easiest and the less expensive, I believe we should do what we can do. Any other further comments on the motion <clears throat> before us? Seeing none. Uh, got a call for the vote of the, my motion from Alderman O'Brien to recommend the Board of Aldermen grant the street numbering petition in part with a stipulation that Sheet B, Lot 1058, be assigned the street address of 25A New Searles Road and that there be no address change to Sheet B, Lot 59. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The uh, motion carries. When the clerk is ready, I'm going to ask the question of unfinished business. There is none. Okay. Ask the clerk, new business resolutions. Also none. Okay. New business ordinances. O 18-001, endorser 
Jim Donches, prohibiting parking on both sides of the entire length of Front Street. Okay. Is everybody somewhat familiar with Front Street? And let's see if we can get this up here so you could just take a gander at it. Uh, looking for number 30. That's right, right here, yeah. All right. <laughs> if we look here, you see from Franklin Street where my cursor is, this is Front Street. This is the uh, bridge that goes over the Nashua River. You can see where Franklin Street is with the church right there that comes down, and it's your first left off of Franklin Street. It feeds into the development, and this parcel of land right here is Cotton Mill Square. Now, if you look, particularly over here, it is a railroad track. There is no other entrance and exit out of this particular property. It is uh, an accepted street, but however, it is narrow. The mayor has made the petition to prohibit parking on both sides of the entire length of Front Street, and uh, I would venture to guess it has more to do with the concerns of moving in ambulances, fire apparatus, snow removal, and other different needs that would, uh, would encumber those jobs to be done by having parking on both sides of the street. The current developer, Brady Sullivan of uh, Cotton Mill Square, is in favor of this uh, petition by, well, this uh, in, uh, ordinance from the mayor to prohibit the parking on uh, both sides of the <laughs> length of Front Street. I'll open up the, uh, the question for discussion. Alderman Lopez. Uh, two thoughts. First, I, this is the first time I've seen a motion to make a change that hasn't been accompanied by some comment from a city department explaining why. Uh, but then the, my second is typically my default look for information would be go ask the people living there, and I don't think anybody lives on that road, except for Cotton Mill, which has its parking and, and that. So is there anybody living there that would be impacted by this? Does anybody know? No. Uh, part of it, uh, like I say, Cotton Mill Square, the back part is still somewhat, I think, it's... Uh, some commercial property and everything, and as the, the whole area gets developed in the future. And I would be amiss to say that I did receive a phone call from uh, our director, uh, Tim Cummings. He could not make it this evening. He was prepared to come in to, uh, you know, do the presentation, but unfortunately he could not make it. But again, in my communication with him for what I opened up and said, basically for the concerns of the... Uh, emergency access to the property, whereas the uh, only real big street that goes, only street that goes in there, actually. Uh, and with the fact that it is supported by Brady Sullivan, uh, those were the points that uh, Director Cummings wanted me to bring up to the, to the committee here. Alderman Jetty. So I uh, took a ride over there to look at it, and I noticed um, that we have a... Uh, uh, a boat ramp going into the river. Uh, there's a trail that's not shown on this map, but there's a a trail that comes down from Front Street. Uh, so if you uh, if you if you look at um, if you go from Franklin Street across the railroad tracks, and you see that that first line that's that's between. Front Street and the river. Um, approximately in that location, there's the electric substation. Mm -hmm. And then next to that, there's a, an entrance way to a boat ramp for people to access the river. And um, you know, it says, you know, temporary parking to unload, load or unload your kayak or your canoe only. Um, and uh, where people are going to put their cars after they unload the kayak uh, is, is a question I have. If Brady Sullivan is in favor of this, would they be willing to, uh, on the other side of Front Street, is they have a parking lot there, would they be willing to allow um, uh, public use of that parking lot to access the... Uh, the, the boat ramp. Otherwise, 
where are people going to put where are people going to park while they're use, using the river? Well, I commend you, Alderman, for doing your homework. They're very impressive, and I hope others are, that we do get a chance to look at these areas as they, they come up. These, this is important part of the work with this particular committee. Um, I really don't have a complete answer for that. Uh, my, my former career, I was deputy chief, and one of my duties as deputy chief, I was in charge of the dive team. And I don't know if that was completely a municipal boat ramp or not, you know, it's true. Uh, and we did not use it a lot because it was in kind of like disrepair to some degree. Uh, we did have it as some part of uh, emergency access. The one that we really like to use was in the uh, Milliard Mall, which is probably west, looking at this map, west of the Broad Street Parkway, basically in this particular area. And the owner of that property did allow it for emergency use by the fire department and dive team. And that seemed to be the better location to launch the boat. Uh, I think your questions are warrant, uh, have merit, but uh, Again, with, when that was designed as a boat ramp, uh, there wasn't the amount of uh, residential traffic that is going down Front Street at this time. And I think uh, what the mayor is asking us with this ordinance is for the higher level of public safety to guarantee that there will be enough accessible for emergency vehicles, why to eliminate the parking. The questions on the boat ramp, I think, is going to have to be asked possibly by somebody else. I, I don't really know if that really officially exists as a boat ramp. Uh, Alderman Lopez. I think the point is well taken, though, uh, because I don't know whether it's a boat ramp or not either. But I have seen the public using it. So I, I think that would be a good question to have asked, um, especially since we don't have the actual presentation from Director Cummings. And the request, the request didn't come from police or fire. It came from the mayor or Director Cummings. So there may be more here that we don't know. Um, I don't know that anybody's going to be using the boat ramp in the next couple of months, um, but I I do know that we could potentially have a, a fire emergency. But I think it would be safe to at least table this until our next infrastructure committee meeting, just so that we can get a full scope of what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. I I don't see this have been any any problem with tabling it at this particular time. I don't see it at being that acute that I'm aware of. So, uh, Alderman Lopez, do you want to? I would make... like to move to table until okay. our next infrastructure committee meeting. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? There's usually not a discussion on the tabling motion, but okay. I have a question for you. Okay, I'll, I'll allow you a question. Go ahead. Okay, uh, is it designated? as a boat ramp. Many times they're used and but the main concern is fire, obviously. If uh, it's very you know, as the city gets larger and people more people come in, a few things we're gonna have to uh, straighten out. That's probably one of them because you can't have uh, anyone parking on that street with the if fire trucks and things like that are going down there. It's almost impossible. Could I, uh, if you're allowing further discussion? <clears throat> Are you rolling your eyes, Mr. Chairman? <laughs> uh, usually by the, <laughs> there's a ta motion to table, which is an undebatable motion. I know usually, but you seem uh, to be allowing further discussion. Let's go back discussion. to undebatable. I know everybody is relatively new to the board, but no. I'm going to see if we can try to keep some decorum in order. Uh, there is a motion to table. If uh, people who so, so choose want to discuss it further, there is no problem with voting against the tabling motion and have further discussion on it. Okay. All right. Seeing that the motion is to table, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion is to table. Okay. Any uh, general discussion? Well, we want to wait to comments from the uh, alderman, remarks by the alderman. Well, actually, 
so remarks are usually you make the remark and then you okay. keep going around the circle. All right. But Go I think this is something you guys might want to weigh in on. Um, my, my general discussion was, um, as you know, the Committee on Infrastructure, I feel like it might be a major focus of this year to be paying attention to the infrastructure we have in terms of sidewalk um, and how it is impacting traffic uh, in the city, particularly because some of the infrastructure decisions we've made regarding the sidewalks make it, I mean, there's a lot of public request for DPW to clear certain sidewalks or to do a better job. And that's not really a, a discussion that we can even reasonably consider, even in specific areas, if the infrastructure for the, the sidewalks is so cluttered with objects or the width of the sidewalks are so narrow that you can't reasonably clean them. And then in the summer, when there isn't ice and rain and all that kind of stuff, we still have degrading sidewalks as well. So last year and the year before, we really tackled the issues of uh, road paving for cars. And I just want to know the committee's thoughts on trying to focus on sidewalks and pedestrian safety as well. We have in the past um, heard from Sarah Marchant regarding the complete streets um, study that was done, I think, in 2016. And they studied the density of people walking in different areas, the state of repair of different road areas. Um, and that sort of just fell by the wayside. We, need, we haven't really integrated that into a master plan or updated the city's master plan. So I think there's work the committee could do here to try to figure out what is the actual scope of need? What is our reasonable ability to meet that need? And then if there's a gap, what should we do about that? Well, when you mention the issues with sidewalks, plowability, and everything else like that, I would refer that you ask the question to legal and then bring it up perhaps before the board like that. Uh, because I know there's other communities, if you do not shovel the sidewalk, that you can be cited in violation. I have never heard or seen that done So, in the city of Nashua, so I don't know if that's one of our statutes or not. So therefore, to get into that type of discussion on that matter, I think it's going to require some research, uh, and if I would probably pose a question to legal on that. I would invite legal to be present to this committee because uh, it's my understanding from speaking to them recently that there is a city ordinance about shoveling uh, sidewalks, but it's unenforceable because there's a state legislation that prohibits, you can't actually tell anybody to shovel a sidewalk that's a private citizen or business. So the question kind of becomes, the people of Nashua are asking who can clean our sidewalks and the city can't do anything in two out of three categories. It could opt to do certain areas for example, areas with particularly dense um, populations of elderly people. But we can't reasonably even approach that question until we understand the condition of our sidewalks and where people are using them the most. OK, so is uh, correct to assume, Alderman, you're requesting legal to appear to answer questions on the uh, sidewalks and? As well as Director Marchant, because I think, and possibly DPW, because okay. I think they would have valuable input that this committee could be All right, can the clerk considering. reflect that on the minutes? That request from Alderman Lopez, that uh, Director Marchand and a member of the city legal department, if they would be so gracious to join us at the uh, nef next infrastructure meeting to discuss Alderman Lopez's uh, questions. I think my greater sense is just that we need a plan, and it has to be an informed plan, so. I would like to be informed. Okay. Any other points of general discussion? Okay, seeing none. Public comment. We have nobody signed up. Uh, remarks by the alderman. Start over here, Alderman Jetty. Nothing. Alderman Lopez. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to announce that there's a, a pancake breakfast this Saturday at the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, it's called Pancakes for a, a Princess. Um, it is to benefit um, a handicapped little girl and their family's effort to try to get a handicapped van so that she can move around. Um, so for more information, you should be able to find that on the Boys and Girls Club's page. Yeah, and that's this Saturday, correct? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Alderman Gage, any comments? I do want to apologize. I know from experience up in uh, the State House when there's a table motion, I'm sorry for speaking. Uh, that comes first. I, I apologize for that. 
And I, too, this is my first time as alderman chairman, uh, you know, so I think we're all going to get our feet wet together mm -hmm. as we go down, but I think we've got a good committee here, and I think we'll, you know, get it done definitely for the citizens, so that's the important thing. We'll, we'll catch up. We'll get up to better speed, actually, so I'm surprised we were able to work the computer. So there's some blessings in, the, in disguise <laughs> here as well, so <laughs> everything is good. Uh, does the clerk have anything? I don't want to... That would be okay. it. No, okay. Um, there's no need for a non-public session. Uh, Alderman Lopez, do you have a motion? I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Very good. A motion to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. And the uh, Committee on Infrastructure will declare closed at uh, 740. <laughs>